I, I think this is a, a really important part of uh, the overall discussion, the, the discussion around megatrends and looking into the future. And quite frankly, uh, from a governance perspective and the work that the government's doing at the moment, that should be a key element in over, our overall focus. Uh, looking forward, seeing what the opportunities are, seeing what the issues that we have to deal with might be and, uh, and how we manage those sorts of things and the, the trends that are starting to come through that are being observed uh, within the economy, but particularly in respect of meeting the agricultural task. We all know uh, the numbers around what's going to be required to feed the globe, say, by 2050. But what are the issues that we're going to face uh, in achieving that uh, and what strategies should we putting, be putting in place to manage that process? And quite frankly, in the development of the white paper, which is a process that we're undertaking at the moment, those things should be a key part of the focus because they're the things that we're going to be coming up against. Uh, and rather than what unfortunately happens much of the time is we spend a lot of time looking at the future in the rearview mirror. Uh, and so we get a very narrow view of uh, what has happened uh, rather than a more expansive view uh, of what is going to happen and what so what the opportunities might be in a process that I've been chairing over the last 12 months uh, in respect of the forest industry, for example, where a lot of the effort that I've undertaken in that process has been to get the industry to change their focus, uh, not look at the future on the basis of the past, but look at the new opportunities, the new demand that is coming in the future for forest and wood fibre based products. Uh, and for example, in uh, some work I've seen out of Canada, the projections are that that could increase fourfold by 2020 from 2012 numbers. And if that's the case, there's a significant supply task for the forest industry. We see similar things existing within the food task. Uh, we're seeing a number of things that show up in the work that we'll be talking about today. Uh, obviously a hungrier world, a wealthier world, uh, a bumpier ride, so there's some issues that we have to deal with, uh, climate variability, those sorts of things, how we manage those things across our landscape. Uh, obviously, a number of economic issues, and we've seen that with the dollar in recent years and the impact that that's had through the Australian economy and agricultural sector. Uh, the preferences of our customers, consumers, uh, and we're having that conversation at the moment, particularly over the last fortnight around some issues, but then of course, the role of technology and the transformative technologies that are, that are going to play a significant part in helping us meet those productivity gains that uh, are going to be absolutely essential in meeting the growing food task. So really good to see here today some collaboration between the universities around the curriculum uh, and the offering for agricultural science in this country. Really good news. Also good news to see work that's being done uh, in, in looking at the new technologies that might be required, the skill bases that might be required, uh, and the innovation that's going to come through in those people working in the agricultural sector. And we're starting to see now in the underlying statistics of who our farmers are, it's emerging that the story isn't necessarily a sad one about all our farmers getting older. It's younger, smarter, uh, more highly trained farmers with higher education skills and technical skills operating larger farms with fewer people, more technology uh, and more mechanism to actually maintain their competitiveness in the overall agricultural sector and the global market. We need to continue to remember that we are a trading nation. We export 60% of what we grow. And the way that we manage our relationships with our Trading partners, also our customers, is really very important. And the signals that we send, largely from the conversations we have in our local market, can be very important to what's being heard when we're trying to access uh, those new markets that we're looking to achieve into the future. And if, so if we spend a lot of time here telling everyone else how bad their stuff is uh, and that we don't want it, uh, why would they necessarily consider taking uh, maintaining a trading relationship, and those messages are already starting to float 
uh, back from some of our trading partners in the way that we're having our discussions. But importantly, what are the innovations that are going to maintain the productivity gains that are going to help us meet the, f the food task? How do we, um, from a government perspective, embed those into our policy long term? Uh, and all of those things, I think, should be part of the conversation as we develop the white paper, because if it's going to be an enduring document, if it's going to stand uh, by a bipartisan uh, nature over a long period of time, we actually have to embed those things into it because it needs to be a foundation document that anyone, any government can pick up into a, a reasonable period into the future and use that to look at the specific policy Im implementations that might be put into place uh, to meet all of those demands that are going to come onto us in the future. So I think this is probably one of the more important conversations of the conference. It might be the graveyard shift, Mick, but I, th I still think it's really important. Uh, and quite frankly, I'm really quite excited to participate in the panel uh, because, as Mick said, we do have some really good experts amongst, amongst us here today. So uh, it's great to be here, to be part of it all, and look forward to the discussion this afternoon. Thanks.